Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's make some games. This is the current state of the old tower defense that I've been working on for the last couple weeks, briefly. And uh, there are uh, there's a 3D camera rendering. There are some things in the world rendering. A tower model, a what is ostensibly an ant. God. You'd think I'd be used to programmer art by now, and yet these things look worse and worse every time I look at them. Let's get that off my screen. So today I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be making those actually mean something. I'm going to be attaching them to data, representing the things that they're supposed to represent. I suppose um, I, I meant to mention this a little while ago as well, like a couple of videos ago. If you look on, if you look like at the at the at the date on my computer when I'm recording this, I'm doing these in batch. I've just sat down today and said I'm going to make these game making videos for two hours and see how much I can get done or however long it ends up being. What that means is also that if you look on the GitHub repository for this, uh, the status of the GitHub repository is always going to be a couple weeks ahead of whenever the videos go up. If I wanted to, there might be a way to like keep branches private or releases private until a certain point or something. But to be honest, um, I don't really want to do that. If you want to look ahead at what I'm going to be doing in future videos, uh, I think that can be I think that can be quite valid, a, a quite a valid thing to do. It's not like any of this is a trade secret or anything. I keep the code private for the other tutorial videos until the video goes public because I like don't want to spoil what I'm doing ahead of time. And I don't want people to look at it and get confused about something that I explain in the video before I make the video public because that would just be a big huge mess. Uh, but this this let's make a game thing is considerably more casual than that, so I'm not if you wanna if you wanna like read ahead in the textbook or whatever the analogy would be, that's fine. So let me consult my notebook. Okay, game entities. So I typically call, let's make another group here. I typically call all the things that take up physical space in, in my game worlds entities. This has gotten a little bit weirder in the last couple of years as, as design models such as Entity Component System has started to gain popularity. Uh, this is not an Entity Component System. They're just entities because like I don't know of, another, of a better word to describe a general thing that is a thing that exists in space. With that said, I should probably come up with one like right now. I guess I could call it object, but then that would be confused. That, that would get confusing with like game maker objects. Same problem with instances. I'll just go with entities for now, what the heck. Uh, function. So let's define a constructor first. These are going to have a couple of common properties between everything that goes in the game world, foes, towers, decorative trees, whatever. Um, there's going to be a position in space. There's going to be a A rotation. If I was smart, I would use quaternions. I don't foresee myself doing anything complicated enough to warrant using a quaternion, and uh, that would require learning how they work. Actually, no, it wouldn't. Juju Adams, the scribble guy, did make a quaternion library, which is pretty simple and gets the job done, but I, um... Hmm. I kind of don't want to rely on too many external things in this series. I'll never... I'll never... Inev mm. I'll inevitably use some. There's at least one that I'm planning on later. I'm probably going to use Scribble to draw text on the UI at a later date. There is a, there is a 3D particle system, which exists, which I quite like, which I'll probably drop in later, but that's, that's way on down the line. Anyway, uh, getting back on point, transform stuff. So I'm going to give all, all game entities an update method, a render method, and a destroy method. Update and render, I've already explained what those are for. Those are the step and draw events. Uh, destroy can, thought, can be thought of as the destroy event. Currently, as of this point, um, Game Maker Studio 2.3 does not have a built-in destructor method, uh, which will fire whenever a struct is garbage collected. So if anything creates a, uh, like a data structure or anything like that at any point, that will need to be explicitly destroyed whenever the entity is. Otherwise, it'll uh, that'll be a memory leak. Uh, it will be empty for now because I'm not creating any data structures or buffers or anything of the sort. Let's see. 
This entity class itself won't ever be instantiated, by the way. You can think of this as like an abstract class or something. Uh, let me... Let me let me create another class, which will be tower, tower entity, and it's going to inherit from entity. Okay, and the tower is going to have a uh, little bit of special data. So one, it's going to take the um, the tower class, the tower data, which it's based on. Uh, that is going to be things like that. That is going to be a reference to one of these. One of the uh, like tower pebbles, tower fire, whatever. Let's see. It's also going to want. Let me split this into two columns so that I can see them both at once. Uh, it's also going to want a, its own set of stats. I think. Will it? Not necessarily. Okay, I'll hold off on that for now. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's update method and it's render method. My, my fingers are, my fingers have an off by one error on the keyboard. It's going to want to draw itself. So I'm going to override the update method. Did I call this, uh, did I call this entity class like an abstract class or something a minute ago? If I didn't, I should have, because that's essentially what it is. We are just going to, uh, we're just going to render its model. <clears throat> We're going to set the world matrix to, I can just copy and paste code. I'm allowed to do that. Uh, we will set the world matrix to whatever its transform is. So that will be uh, we'll start with we'll start with scaling. So that'll be scale. Scale.x, scale.y, scale.z, position and rotation. Uh, after that, we will, is that correct? That is the correct number of arguments. That is not the correct number of arguments. It looks like it is. X, y, z, rotation. Oh, there's an extra dot in there. Okay, I was gonna say. Uh, then we'll apply the rotation. Realistically, you can set the rotation and scale and even translation at the same time all in one function call, but because I know I'm going to get yelled at in the comments for doing that in an actual game, I will not. And lastly, we will do the same thing for position. And then matrix set. Uh, okay, there are apparently some errors in here. Again, what are you complaining about? Got a comma expected something. Are there too many arguments in this one? No? Oh, uh, it was it was not a comma, it was a semicolon, and that's because I'm missing a parentheses. Okay, there we go. And instead of draw, instead of drawing vb underscore foe as the vertex buffer, we will draw class dot model. Um, if I wanted to be real, if I wanted to be real careful about variable scope, I would say self dot class dot model. That's going to drive me insane. I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing it for the transform variables up here, and I'm not going to do it for for the class. Local variables are yellow. Some people like to prefix their local variables with an underscore like that. I don't really, I don't really like doing that. Um, I uh, I rely on syntax highlighting for local variables, even though perhaps I shouldn't, but I do because uh, that's less work. Um, now the actual model for these things. I need. I, I will say. I will say this. Each, each, uh, each tower data will get its own copy of the vertex buffer. Um, all right, so if I, uh, I'm going to get rid of all this too. If 
I run the game now, nothing's going to happen because there aren't any instances of a of, in, of a tower entity in the world. Uh, so we see here there's just the uh, the floor with nothing on it. So let's uh let's get to the exciting part. I'm going to create a big old list ds list of entities, and I'm going to. Oh, by the way, before I forget, the um, the rotation and scaling of an entity can stay as they're initialized, but I do want I do want the X Y Z to be passed in through the constructor because probably that's they're going to be doing that commonly in most cases like that. Okay. Let's see, is the syntax highlighting going to catch up? There we go. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll create one. I kind of feel like it would make sense to have an entity kind of add itself to the, to the list when it's created, but that also feels like spaghetti, so maybe I won't. Uh, what did I call it? Did I call it entity tower? I called it tower entity, other way around. I'll call it entity tower because, like, most important words first in, uh, in code naming conventions, like that. So I'll, uh, I'll create one at, let's say, what was the middle of the room? 64360, zero. And I'll create a, a fire tower also. Uh, let's say uh, a little bit behind it and maybe to the right, like that. Okay, uh, now we need to update and draw those. Like so. Okay, so we're just going to loot through all the entities in, in the game. And we are trying to draw those with a texture, and that is the ant texture, and that is not working out. Um, haha. Oops. I don't know if I don't know if this would be a, a confusing thing that I said earlier, but uh, earlier I said I was going to just use vertex vertex coloring for like all the all the graphics in the game, and then I went and said the the photo types would be sprites. For one, I'm not. I'm also not 100% sure on that. I might create like an ant model or something like that, depending on how adventurous I'm feeling uh, with 3D modeling skills. And then I could I could do one of a couple different tricks to make them animate. The main thought process there was that the um, the foes are probably the only thing in here that's really going to need to animate in any way other than a basic uh, transformation. It's like if you want to have a tree sway in the breeze or something, that would that would be pretty simple to do. But foe types would be moving around. They'd be essentially animals, they'd need to be a little bit more elaborate. I'll see, I'm not sure. Uh, one of the nice things about separating the render code for different types of entities is that um, if I want to just yank out the sprites out of the, the faux entities and turn them into uh, vertex buffer models, I can do that without completely upending the rest of the game. Uh, speaking of that, let us let us essentially make a copy of this for foes. Let's see, foe, it's also going to have a class in XYZ position. And I'm probably going to give them a level. And okay, I have an idea which is slightly different than what I was doing, what I was going to do before. Instead of just giving a foe a sprite and a um, and, and calling it a day, uh, just in case, like, boss enemies need to be a different shape or something, or more probably they need to be bigger, scaled up a bit, uh, I will say, I will give them a model as well. And that is simply going to be vb underscore foe for most, for most things.
Do I want to load a different... Okay, I guess for the sake of consistency and... For the sake of consistency, each, each prototype will load its own model. I definitely foresee this uh, needing to be rearranged in the future, Rethought, rethinking how I do this. I'm not entirely sure how. That will depend on how, uh, how I decide to make things progress, how things work in practice. All right, and then there's always uh, the actual sprite, which will go here. And now when I go to render FO, that will mostly be the same. Okay, that is, that is free of syntax errors, that is free of syntax errors. There's a little bit more that I will do to foes. Each instance of, of a foe is going to need to have its own copy of, of stats. Uh, if, if foe data is the Pokedex entry, uh, this, is the, uh, this is the Pikachu on your team. This is an instance of the, of the class. So I will say... Um, it's, it's, it's going to be important to know both your current HP and your max HP for one, so that you can like show how much of it you have and two, in case you want to draw an HP bar or something like that. This will probably be adjusted to, uh, like according to level, but again, math, that's a job for later. Like that. Uh, speed. I don't envision let's let's make that explicit up there. I don't envision the amount of damage that a foe does ever changing, but just in case. Is there anything else? No, I think that's it. So let's add a a foe entity. over here. Um, this can be what, like a, I, I guess a faux ant. They all look the same. It doesn't really matter. And the level, I'll just make that one. That is not really uh, being dealt with currently. Uh, I guess I'll put these on the left side. The ants are marching one by one. I don't remember how that song goes. I will space them out by 32 because I remember those those numbers off the top of my head, those multiples. And I won't have to think to evenly space them. And that should uh, that should be rendering a line of ants. All right, excellent. That's uh, there's a picnic basket somewhere in the vicinity. All right, how long have I been going? I've been going for 20 minutes in this uh, in, in this video, which is a little longer than the the other recordings that I've done for this. But there has been more in this video than usual. Let me make these actually do something. So let's let's implement an update method for foes. Uh, naturally, in tower defense games, you generally want foes to move towards waypoints on the track so that they follow the track. I will get to that later, but for now, I will just say position.y++. We'll just be curling down the screen. There is no end goal. We're just going to be moving. So those guys are updating. If I wanted to, uh, I could go into the, the tower, say like rotation dot, I guess rotation dot Z plus plus, and it'll rotate. I'm not even gonna bother to delta time this because this is probably gonna be gone in the next video. See, those guys are rotating. Okay. So we've got ourselves an update loop, that's cool. Uh, I am going to, I've, I've Really been just doing one commit message per uh, per episode of this. I should probably break it up at least for some things. Can I um Alright, well the database has changed. Alright, you know what? No, that's gonna that's gonna create broken code if you try and revert to a specific commit when I commit stuff in pieces. You should definitely do this more often than I'm doing right now. This is, um, it's a little easier to forget when you should probably commit stuff when you're recording and talking about stuff. 
Anyway, progress. Next time, what is what do I have written down for next time? Paths. Okay, so we're gonna make the ants follow a path. That'll do. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post about two game dev videos a week. One of these, one tutorial, dealing with game maker, dealing with 3D, dealing with whatever. I have a Patreon for these things, so if you want to chip in, there's links to that in all the places that you'd expect. Otherwise, code for this video description, GitHub. I think that's everything. I hope you found this interesting and or useful. And I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Hull, Indie Punch, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to pronounce them out loud at the end of every video, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.